In this episode, Golden and I discuss Lightyear, full speed ahead. The Omega Beam, full power. The Omega Beam. Welcome to the Omega Beam number 182. I'm your host, Oren Merton. Lightyear fits in an interesting corner of the Pixar Toy Story verse, if you will. Lightyear is supposed to be the movie that the Buzz Lightyear toy from the Toy Story movies is based on. So it's not really a sequel or a prequel to Toy Story, but it is related. Anyway, it's definitely worth a short conversation, so let's get going. I am here with Golden to talk about the latest Pixar release, Lightyear. I thought it was going to be the real life story of Buzz Lightyear, but it turns out it is the movie of Buzz it's, Lightyear. Yeah, it's the character that the toy is based on. Yeah. So already I was completely surprised by where we were going, keeping it spoiler free for just the briefest second. It's a great movie. It had some moving moments. The animation and the CG is spectacular. The voice acting is great. And anyone who tells you that it's somehow quote unquote woke, I, I'm telling you, I turned to Golden in, at the end of the movie and I remember we'd read that people were upset about I some kind of kiss. I knew where the kiss was. I did not see And I still didn't see it. I did not see a kiss between two women. So if you're if if the reason you're not seeing this movie is because you're worried that two women are going to kiss. I mean, trust me. It's a it's a blink and you'll miss it and I blinked and I missed it and I didn't even know it was there. I didn't even blink. Yeah. I, so the, I mean, that's just all they, silliness. They didn't like zoom in on two women kissing or something. <laughs> no. There are, there's a marriage, there's two women who are married but that's it's that is just a, a plot point and i never saw anything else other than that so please don't let that sway you from the movie if you think the story's interesting you think the plot's interesting the action's interesting it is interesting and enjoy it so three two I one spoilers it was, it was beautiful it I, was. I i had read that there were mixed reviews going in and I just very much enjoyed it. And I did not miss Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear because it's a different character. Yeah, this was, you know, this was not... He's the toy. Yeah, the toy, ha It's it made total sense to me that the toy would have a different, you know, quote-unquote voice I mean, actor. It makes sense that you have a captain voice a captain. Yeah, so I did not walk in knowing anything about the plot of the movie. I did not know that it was going to be about Lightyear trying to get home I mean, all these years. You do have with the toy that the toy is proud and kind of self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. And you have that similar thing right. with the Buzz Lightyear right. character and him having to get over himself and learn that he doesn't have to do everything by himself and that he can ask for help. And one of the key points, I think, of the movie is Buzz Lightyear has to learn, in a sense, to live. And I think that's why his partner, who is the one who marries another woman, that's why I think the juxtaposition of the two is so important because... He's working with her granddaughter. He has to right a wrong that he's even told. He's like, you're not living. Right. You've never actually lived yeah you've never taken a moment to i mean and he hasn't gotten older because for him it's been it hasn't been very long at all so it's him choosing to live right and that that is in a sense that is the theme of the movie is not missing the life around you as you're so focused on getting something done i, I think it's maybe a bit more of an adult message than a lot of the the more youth-oriented Pixar movies, but I think that's okay. And, and I think we've reached a point where you can have a Pixar movie that is not just aimed at young kids like Toy Story, for, well, but is young, aimed at older kids. For young kids, they're gonna learn that teamwork is... Yeah, teamwork beautiful. is important. And there's lots of characters that have lots of funny quirks that will, you know, really be enjoyable. They've got Taika Waititi as one of the voices. You cannot, you cannot go wrong in a comic setting if Taika Waititi is in your film. Yeah, I mean, he just doesn't believe in himself too yeah he doesn't believe in himself he thinks that he's always going to do things wrong so he does things wrong because he's convinced himself of that yeah so there's a lot of really positive messages there and that's the thing the people are complaining that you know wokeness or whatever i mean there's no wokeness i mean the marriage is there to show that this woman has a life the fact that she happens to have found a, a woman instead of a man, I mean, whatever. I mean, there's uh, 568,000 
you know, movies and TV shows out there where people find opposite sex partners. It's a big deal. You know, he wants to fix it. And it comes up in the movie that if he actually did fix it, Mm -hmm. she wouldn't have found the love of her life. Right. She wouldn't have had a family. She wouldn't have had that same life. Right. And he'd be taking that away from her. So at some point, there's just no, there's no going back. Right. It's to look forward and what can you do with tomorrow? Yeah. And the quote unquote big bad ends up being Buzz has to it's, both it's metaphorically and physically. It's him in his rigid way. Right. Has to both physically as well as metaphorically fight his own nature in order to, uh, to come to the conclusion that it's more important to live. And yet Sox is with him. Oh, yeah. Sox is like, I like, I, I like you. Right. I don't like this old man who <laughs> exactly. was trying to kill everything. Exactly. So Lightyear has not made as much money as many of the Pixar movies. It's still doing pretty well. I mean, I, I refuse to say any movie that's made, you know, closing in on $200 million worldwide is not doing well. But I think some people have been scared away from it because of of maybe some culture war nonsense that they should simply ignore and get yourself a good story well done it's a lot of fun it's well acted i mean he resists socks at first yeah and then it gets to the point that he's willing to jump out a window to save socks mm-hmm. so it, it's a nice it's nice that he wants to save everyone right and he still is like you said fighting his nature he's fighting having others because he also doesn't want them to get hurt Right. But is that just an excuse right. for not wanting to work with them? So It's probably both. It's yeah. probably he is probably legitimately, you know, part of his mission is to save people and so he doesn't want them getting hurt, but at the same time, he also doesn't want to work with people because that's that's who he is. But it changes and how it changes is a lot of fun. Yes. It's I thought it was a beautiful movie. It's one I definitely want to see a few more times. Oh yeah. I mean, Pixar has really, they've cracked the code on how to make these animated movies both gorgeous and sound beautiful and meaningful. And this is just another one in a long line of of winners. Definitely. Well, thank you, Golden. You're welcome. And that's it for this episode. You can find the show notes at theomegabeam.com slash 182. If you liked this episode, please leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Your reviews help people who like this stuff find our podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop us a line at info at theomegabeam.com. Be good to yourselves and each other, and we'll catch you next time. The Omega Beam. The Omega Beam. Full stop.